The spirit of faith. Let's discuss. That's the teaching tonight. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. I will forever seek your face. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. chapter 4 verse 13 to 14 the title of the teaching tonight is the spirit of faith of spiritual experiences happening as I'm teaching there's there's already an anointing on several people here the Bible says the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke to me as the word of God comes forth there's going to be experiences spiritual experiences happenings in the lives of people some of you begin to feel some things around you you begin to sense a presence. Healings even will happen. It says we have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Verse 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus excuse me and shall present us with you now the bible tells us there that there is such a thing as the spirit of faith it says we have the same that means we have the spirit that is in god the bible calls it the spirit of faith and just as god will believe and will say a thing and it will come to pass we also have the same spirit we also have the same life in us to be able to believe possibilities that only exist in god and declare them to see them manifest so in god's realm words are not just for communication words are first of all for creation everything that god says he believes in the reality of what he says God believes that his words are spirit and life. God's, God believes that his word carries creative capacity, creative potentials. Every word that comes from God is a being. B-E-I-N-G. It's not by mistake. Now the Bible says we have the same spirit in God that makes him believe things that are humanly impossible well enough to say these things and they come into being he says we also believe so this spirit which is called the spirit of faith gives us the capacity to believe and gives us the capacity to speak into reality the possibilities that we believe possibilities and things that can only be possible from God's standpoint. Remember he said in Isaiah 55 that my ways 
and not your ways. He said, My thoughts are higher than your thoughts, as high as the heavens are from the earth. There are several millions of kilometers from the earth's surface to the sun. And the Bible says that as high as the heavens are from the earth, so far are the ways of God from our ways. And in verse 10 he says, As the rain cometh down from heaven and return not until it has watered the earth to make it bring forth seed to the sower and bread to the eater. I'll teach on finances this year again and I'll, I'll, I will examine that scripture. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of your mouth and shall not return to you void. It shall not return to me void. So when God says a thing, His word is a messenger. He sends it on an errand. The word that comes from the mouth of God not only comes to encourage you, it doesn't just come to reassure you, it comes to bring into fulfillment that which it was said. In other words, your reality is based on the creative power of God's word spoken to you per time. In other words, the word of God brings you into different seasons according to the will and the intentions of God for your life. The Bible says this happens by the spirit of faith. So when a man has that spirit, of course the spirit of faith is the Holy Spirit. So when a man has that spirit in him all of a sudden an ability is triggered in him not to believe that there is anything called impossible like when i was sharing about the seed i sowed to god i know somebody was saying oh the next plan now is to give god five you understand five with six zeros in front that's the next that's the next plan and then from there we'll keep going on and on till the time will come where we can give billions literally for the work of God there's nothing there it doesn't matter what I take from you or give to you nothing I take from you or give to you changes your name yes or no nothing I give to you or take from you changes your height yes or no That's not, this is not the time to look for how to buy the latest car. It will come. And I told the workers, I'm not, I'm not boasting, I just told them, if God doesn't bring a car to me this year, next year I will go and buy my car. With nobody under pressure. I want to show you this year that there is a realm in God called the realm of all possibilities. And when you tap into that website, that realm in God, you can veto every limitation that existed in your background. It's possible. The Bible says it happens by the infusion and the implant of the spirit of faith. Psalm 62 verse 1 to 2. Let me show you something. We need screens or we need TV screens. Amen. So that I don't keep turning back like this. We need at least a television here or a television there. And we'll get it by next Sunday. He said, Truly, my soul waited upon God. No, give me New King James. Give me New King James, please. He said, Truly, my soul silently. <laughs> the, 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 the problem with waiting on God is that you have to do it where? How? In silence. Not just silence as in you keeping quiet, but silence meaning God doesn't talk to you. Have you been in a situation where you are praying to God, at least explain why I'm going through what I'm going through, and God seems silent? Have you been there before? It's called waiting on God. Tell your neighbor, waiting on God. In case you have not known what that kind of season is, I'm here to announce it to you and articulate it to you. Every time you are going through things you don't understand, and the more you talk to God, the more God is giving you. In our secondary school, we had a slang many years ago. When somebody calls you and ref you refuse to answer the person, we'll call it death jam. Say, you give me death jam. Say death jam. And that's the slang for it. If you call somebody and doesn't answer, you say, ah, you did death jam me. Well, last did God death jam you?
He says, my soul silently waits for God. I'm not grumbling. I may not understand what is happening. I may have sown seeds. I may have prayed, fasted, done everything. I may have raised all kinds of sacrifice. And nothing seems to be working. He said, but this is what my soul will do. My soul, which is even the most disturbed part of my being. Because that's where your emotions are. And that's the reason why as a believer, it is not good for you to be led by your emotions. There are a lot of people, even believers, who feel or who, who describe their love for God and for other people as emotions. What they, what they call love for God or for people is their emotions. And that's the reason why they can love a person today and tomorrow they say, I don't love him anymore. You didn't love him. You had feelings for him. That's not love. And feelings are like smoke. No be so. Here today and gone tomorrow. And it will shock you how that a lot of people are choosing their life partners and getting married on that. It takes more than that to enter into the covenant of marriage. For you to enter into the covenant of marriage, the commitment of marriage, you must die first. That whether that feeling is there or not, I'm together with you. I'm committed to you. And if it is true love, for God so loved the world that he did what? Gave. So even when you don't feel like it, that's the reason why sometimes God will come and ask you for strange things that you should do. God will say, empty your bank account. And as you empty it, you are angry with God. He's trying to show you how that that feeling does not matter. This relationship is not about feelings. Whether you vex or you are happy, we are stuck together. Say amen to that. I know somebody doesn't like that message, but that's the, the reason why you don't like it is because that's your message for today. Huh? It's like a bow, it's bitter in your mouth, but when it gets into you, it treats you. Amen. And you must take your walk with God to that level oh, where it's beyond feelings. Where you don't come to church because you are happy, you woke up happy on Sunday morning, and because you are just happy, took your bath, wore your best clothes, took your selfie stick to church. And then you snap and say, Happy Sunday. No, it must go beyond that. It must come to a point where you wake up with fever and you drag yourself to church. He say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praise shall continually be. Even when I don't have food, I'll be singing His praise of how He supplied. It doesn't make sense. That's the place you must graduate to. If it is true love, you will die. So the psalmist says, my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. Go to verse 2. That's my point of emphasis. He says, he only is my rock and my salvation. He only. For a man to make this statement, you must know that he's not just writing a poem. We are used to having plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Some people have up to plan F. No be so. Some ladies, ladies say amen. amen. Ah. That's the reason why some ladies, God bless the ladies in this house. But you know some ladies who are not so godly like that. They can have three people coming to them for a relationship. And they will not say no to all. They'll just arrange them in their graph. So that in case this one misbehave or his family doesn't like me, I can. Why are you laughing now? Okay, let me forget that teaching. Somebody say, Apostle, we don't come again. Can't you just keep quiet on some things? <laughs> he said, He only is my rock. When was the last time you came to a point where you, you, you made a decision in your life that outside God, nothing else, and anything God will not give me shouldn't come? Or anything God will not give me does not exist. If it exists, it doesn't exist in my space. He only is my rock. Not an uncle, not a godfather somewhere, not a connection here, not a connection there. He only is my rock. It takes the spirit of faith to make this declaration. He said, He is my defense. 
and because of that i shall not be greatly moved in other words i shall not be moved all i want to know if is if god is on my side as long as god is on my side the bible says in romans 8 31 if god be for us who can be come to a point you it will when you when your spirit of faith is operating in your life you come to a point where it is all about god and nothing else that doesn't mean you will not read that doesn't mean you will not do your work as a man or as a woman but it just means that your your lifeline and your insurance is god and nothing else having pension scheme is good saving doing all of this contribution and all of that there's nothing bad in that but don't tie your existence to those things so I want to marry now. Let me enter contribution. 50,000 every month we are contributing. Then my marriage is in November. So I've already calculated since we are 12 people or how many people now? Let's say 10 people. If we calculate 50, 50, 50, by November I'll collect my share. That will be 550. I see if I have 550 at least I can. Now he has already, he, that, he has shown exactly how he intends that things should happen and has isolated God. And you know one thing with God? That's the reason why Jesus was in the boat when it, when it was sinking and he was sleeping. God is so gentle that when you tell, excuse him, he will excuse himself and allow you. But you know, anything that God is absent from dies naturally and rapidly. Not only does it die naturally, it dies rapidly. Anything that God is outside from, any plan that God is outside of, in your plan there must be a gap you don't understand that God must fill. Or else, surrender it to God. The Bible says, casting all your cares on Him, for He does what He cares. You know, I like that scripture. I think that's First Peter chapter 5 verse 6 and 7 verse 6 says we should humble ourselves under the mighty hand of god and he will exalt us how do you humble yourself verse 7 it says by casting all your cares so humility before god is not yes sir god bless you man we can do all that with malice and envy in our heart humility before god is first prayer casting all your cares lord i'm nothing without you I can do nothing without you. Jesus said a son, the son can do nothing of himself. But that which he sees the father do. He said he only is my rock. He only is my rock and salvation. It takes the spirit of faith to make that declaration. It takes the spirit of faith for a man to come to that experience. very quickly what does the spirit of faith do, do in our lives of course i've already told you that the spirit of faith is the holy spirit at work in us that gives us the capacity to believe the things of god and to speak those things into reality so quickly what does the spirit of faith do number one the spirit of faith gives us the capacity to believe for answers to prayer it gives us the capacity to believe for answers to prayer. We must come to a place of conviction of the truth that God surely answers prayers. It's not just a statement of fact, it is a truth. It is the truth, it is reality that God answers prayers somebody say it after me god answers prayers say it again god answers prayers you must be settled in your heart about it so anytime you go to pray even if it's prayer to bless a meal if you have the spirit of faith in you he brings you or gives you the capacity to believe for answers. That's the reason why the Bible says, Let him that come to God, that he that come to God will do what? Believe that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
So the question is not if you prayed or not. The question is if your prayer was the prayer of faith. Mark 11, 24. Hear what, the, what, what Jesus taught on faith. He says, Whatsoever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received. And then he says, You will have, you will have it, right? And you will have them. Now, this is a very... <laughs> A wonderful scripture you need you need the wisdom of God to understand this it says whatever things you ask whatever means whatever it means anything whether it's a husband or a wife or a job or a contract or another level with the Holy Spirit or another dimension of grace whatever it is or children whatever means whatever all needs are on the same category when you walk by faith. There's nothing too small or too big. He said, I, he says, is there anything too hard for me to do? So the question is not whether you prayed or not. The question is, did you, was your prayer sponsored by faith? Or you prayed out of fear? Or you prayed religiously to fulfill all righteousness that I have prayed? If that's how you pray, they expect nothing. The Bible says, For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He said, Let not such a man think that he will ever receive anything from God. God knows when your heart is solidly fixed on him to answer. He knows. And he waits till you get to that place. He says, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you will have them. So we receive things before they manifest. That's what it means. Why? Because to receive is by faith. But you have them when they physically manifest. So before that contract comes in your hand, you must have received it in your heart. Is somebody getting that? So you conclude that prayer believing that it is done. Expecting a good feedback. When was the last time you prayed and you waited for an outcome as you desired? When was the last time? The, la the last time it happened to you like that was the last time you operated by the spirit of faith. I'm showing you what makes for dominion on the earth. I'm showing you what makes, what can empower a man to conquer territories. It's not any Godfather anywhere. This is the secret. The spirit of faith. That when you pray, you believe that it is done. That God has answered. And you wait in the days ahead. To see the result in your favor. And in case the result turns out to the negative. I told you here before. That every time you are told no. Don't get discouraged. No does not mean you will not get it. No simply means next opportunity. N-O. It means try again. Oh you didn't hear that. You know some of us will get discouraged after the first prayer. Ah. It just shows that you didn't pray by faith. 1 John 5 verse 14 to 15. Wonderful scripture. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. Right? That we have in him. This confidence, this assurance is settled. And what is it? He said that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So as long as your prayer was in line with the will of God. What does it mean to pray according to God's will? Jesus taught us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6. Keep this scripture here. He says, Hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The meaning of that prayer is prioritizing God first. So praying according to God's will means making God the first and the top priority of your prayer. So the last time you asked God for money, what did you ask him for it for? Or why did you ask him? Because God looks at, he looks at your motive before he blesses. That's the reason why we feel some people are not supposed to be blessed. We call them money misrule. No, it may just be that in their ignorance, their motive keeps God at number one. He says, this is the confidence we have that whatever we, where we ask anything according to his will. Asking according to God's will also means praying in the spirit. 
Because Ephesians chapter 6 in verse 18 tells us, Praying always with every prayer and supplication in the Spirit. With every prayer and supplication. Praying in the Spirit goes beyond praying in your understanding. The reason why a lot of people have not received the gift of tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not because the Holy Spirit cannot come into them or baptize them. It's not because they are too sinful. It's just that they are afraid of praying that way because they feel that their prayer is more powerful when it is captured within their understanding. But don't you know that it takes faith to pray in a language you don't understand? Because Romans 8.26 says this, that we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Even what to pray, you don't know. You think God doesn't know that you need a car? You think God doesn't know that you need a house? You think God doesn't know that he needs to change your story? Who created you? That's the question. He says, But the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. And then in verse 27 he says, that he that searcheth the heart knows the mind of the spirit that spirit that is praying for us and through us when we pray in the spirit the bible says god understands what the spirit is saying and god understands that the spirit is right there making intercession for us for the saints according to the will of god so when you pray in the holy ghost what you are, what is happening is the holy spirit is taking your needs and your desires and clothing them with provisions in god's realm that will force the hand of god to attend to that prayer That's what it means to pray according to his will. Now the Bible says, when you ask along that line, you should know that he hears. He says, it is a confidence we have. It is settled. Verse 15, wonderful scripture. He says, and he that, and if we know that he hears, right? And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask. Now that we know that everything we ask, he hears. He says, we know therefore that we have the petitions that we have asked of him this is like a mathematical formula equation one and equation two right equation one is that whatever we ask according to his will he hears equation two is that since we believe that whatever we have asked he has heard then we must believe that in equation two whatever he has heard that he will answer so if we believe that he has heard us then we must believe that we have our petitions complete I call that the equation of faith. Or you can simply put it, the equation of answered prayers. If you believe that he has heard you, then you should believe that he has done what you have said. This is God we are talking about, the creator of the universe. Sometimes, you see, God never, God never reduces or increases. He is the all-sufficient God. He sustains all and is sustained by none. Nothing you take from him will reduce him. Nothing you add to him will increase him. Whether you fetch a gallon or a cup or a tanker or a well from an ocean, an ocean remains an ocean. That's the God we serve. He reduces or increases in your mind according to your faith. That's the reason why what praise does in your prayer. That's the reason why God makes us incorporate praise and thanksgiving in our prayer. Because when you praise and thank him, God suddenly is magnified before you. For you to see that that challenge is swallowed up in him. And that becomes your ticket into the answers. Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles or more, it seems today. I don't really know that verse. Lord, I put my trust in you, just because you said, please help me. Now, this is my part of the song, I love this part. But I don't know what to say. I don't know where to stand. But as you give the grace, even when I'm confused, this is what I will do. This is my action. I will say. Thank you. 
Jesus and the praise. I know that's not what you say. But I will sing. I will pray. Lift my hands to honor you. Because your love is true. I will sing. He said, even in my darkest hour, even when I don't understand, I shall know that my prayer got to him. Who told you that there's a prince of Persia that can withhold your prayer? Please bring it down. Let me explain this to us. I don't I didn't intend to go into this, but let me tell you something. You see, we must have understanding of scripture. We must contend for light. The Bible didn't say the prince of Persia held the prayers of Daniel. No. The Bible says the prince of Persia withstood the angel that brought the answer. The reason was because the Holy Spirit, the, it was not yet the dispensation of the Holy Spirit's operation on the earth. So God had to work with angels. And because there is hierarchy in God's system, even though Lucifer had been thrown down, he still maintained his hierarchy. I hope you know Lucifer is still anointed. Because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God didn't take that anointing for him. But now that we have the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, anywhere you enter, tell them the kingdom of heaven he stood in the second heaven and withstood the angel there. But now God has brought the heavens into a man by, by reason of the Spirit of God. That means that the answer that you are looking for is generated from your inside. You need to understand that. That's the reason why the Bible talks about speaking in an unknown tongue. It says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not to man but to God, for no one understands. But in the spirit realm, He speaketh mysteries. Those mysteries are keys into the realm of divine possibilities. So as you are praying in the spirit, what you are doing is you are releasing the answer of your prayer. How that you can sow and reap immediately is the technology of the kingdom. You have to believe it. That's why this life is a higher life. Pastor, God bless you. You're welcome, sir. Please give him my chair to sit down. This is the confidence we have. James chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. One more scripture and we are done with this point. The spirit of faith gives us the capacity to believe for answers to prayers. That is the reason. When you know that your prayers are definitely heard and will be answered, you keep staying at the place of prayer. It doesn't matter if you pray for two weeks and nothing seems to move. The Bible says if the cloud be filled with rain, they will empty themselves. So keep sowing. Keep building. Keep investing. Is anyone among you sick? What should he do? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray this is what they should do for a sick person. Say so let the elders of the church come together. Let them pray over him. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Good ritual. But look at verse 15. I'll show you something powerful there. Yet, the Bible says this is what will bring his healing. It says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. So what brought healing and salvation to that man is not the anointing oil. It's not the elders that came together. No. All that was a physical ritual. That's the reason why the ritual was threefold. Because three is the number of agreement and God. It's a physical ritual so that our minds can understand and come into faith for his healing. He says, but this is what brings healing. The prayer of faith. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he came for healing. But that prayer has capacity to bring forgiveness to his sins. Next verse. He said, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Let's read together from this point. One to go. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails do you have it in Amplified? Amplified translation. It said the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer. Continued. There are certain prayers you have to continue steadfastly in. There is a degree of thirst a man will have that a sip of water will not quench. 
Sometimes a seed can quench it. Sometimes a gulp can quench it. Sometimes it takes a cup of the same water. Sometimes it takes two cups. Sometimes it takes two cups of cold water. But it's the same water. That's how prayer is. Sometimes some issues will move based on the volume of the prayer. But it is faith that sponsors your steadfastness on it. You keep staying on it. You keep releasing prayers on it. Because you know that the Bible says this is the confidence we have in Him. That whatever, whatever means whatever. And somebody is not moving until the hand of God breaks out upon his life. Until the hand of God breaks out upon his family. Until the hand of God arises and crushes the altars of darkness around his community. That's the attitude that the spirit of faith turns on. It says the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power. Makes tremendous power. Makes tremendous power. If you were never told before, let me tell you today that your prayer is so powerful. That's the reason why the only thing Satan wants to attack first is your prayer life. Let's pray midnight prayers. And the first night, she went down with chest pain. Don't you think the devil was already afraid of the outcome? He knew that it was automatic. There's no way somebody prays like this for five days. That heaven will not move. So he said, Let's, the only thing we can do is stop her from praying. And he does it through many ways. Most times, the things that Satan attacks is not his intention. He attacks the things that are attached to our hearts attack her job let her, let, no job for her is that sapi please celebrate sapi you're welcome sir good to see you you're welcome sir so he attacks so you lose your job in january and then you begin to hear all kinds of demonic news from friends watch the company and the counsel you keep blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly some of us have christian friends that are ungodly because of their counsel say in january you know, but begin to apply you i will send you link oh. now january there is no no salary the bible says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but those who seek the lord shall not want any good thing whether i have 88 naira in my account or 3 million anywhere i enter there must be supply because i carry an entitlement mentality mm-hmm if you think there is lack in your family, I will enter that family. It's not, it's about what you carry. You. I will enter that place where you call lack and bring out treasures. He said, I will give unto you treasures of darkness. That's where you know that your sister had money she was saving. There's a grace that sponsors it. And this grace comes from this understanding. If you hear me say amen. Let's move on. Verse 2, okay, Psalm 65, verse 2. One more on this point. If I stop on this point, it's okay. I want to show you a scripture. Psalm 65, verse 2. Give us a new King James. Can we read together on the screen? Or if you have your Bibles at the count of three. One, two, three. O oh, you who hear prayer, to you all flesh. Ah. Did he say to you all Christians? To you all orthodox Christians, to you all pastors, to you who shall come, all flesh. All flesh means what? All flesh, including animals. So what you call their crying or their barking is prayer to God. Is is so in the business of hearing the prayers of all flesh that everyone, including animals. What kind of God do we serve? All flesh, including a sinner. Yes, yeah, somebody may say, but the Bible says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. Give us verse 3, the same chapter. Let me show you. It says, Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. In other words, it doesn't matter what I've done. I come because I know you know how to settle that thing. When last did you go to God like that? I know I misbehave, I messed up, but forget that one. 
You tell the devil is an ins is an inner matter, it's an inside matter, it's between me and God. Stop condemning yourself when you go. That's the reason why we pray and we don't see answers. One of the greatest generals of the previous century, by the name of William Braham, I was told something that shocked me. He moved mightily in the ministry of signs and wonders. One of the greatest prophets ever that has lived. Up to today, his picture is in the White House. Among president of, uh, pictures of president, his picture is there. As he was preaching, fire appeared literally. Even camera captured it. A man that moved in strange dimensions of the anointing. God had to take him because they began to worship him. And I was told that he, he never prayed and fasted more than three days all through his life. Okay, you are already on 30 days now, but you are day 27. I know you want to do night vigil, long night vigil. 40 days of night vigil, my enemies shall perish. Die by fire. Die. And here comes a man without, and I don't have any problem with those prayers. They are good. Oh. Sometimes the Holy Ghost can lead you there to pray that prayer. Oh. Share you the know. Uh-huh. There are extreme, extreme situations call for extreme measures. There are times you pray to resist the devil. There are sometimes the devils don't want to go. It's death. It's no, it's not me, it's the scripture. Herod took James, killed James. When he saw that he pleased the Jews and he was looking for popularity, he took Peter in prison, Peter. They prayed and the, Peter was released. But to show you that the effect of their prayer had not been completed, when Herod traveled to another place, death went there and met him. Because in the realm of the spirit, there's no vacuum. Eh? Since Peter was released, Peter was supposed, somebody was supposed to die on that Passover. So since Peter didn't die, the law of the spirit is that somebody must go. And anybody that plans your downfall, may they go down for your sake. I know some of you don't like that prayer. I say, no, let us love one another. You know, let's not preach. Thank you. You hold your opinion. But I declare by an apostolic and prophetic anointing. Anybody that wishes you evil, may they go down for your sake. Please sit down. Number two. Are we blessed? The spirit of faith, number two, gives us the capacity to see victories. Oh, I love this one. The spirit of faith gives us the capacity to see victories. Psalms 18 verse 28 to 29. Now I know from this scripture that Samson was not only the strongest man in the Bible. There were other terrible people. There were some people probably more terrible than Samson. Because Samson died. But there were some people that went through death and came out. I'm talking Old Testament. Too. Let's look at it. For you will light my lamp. This is David speaking. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Next verse. And because of that understanding that comes from God. He says, for by you I can run against a troop. King James said, I run through a troop. You know what it means to run through an army of enemies? Ask our security system. Sometimes when they do that, the number of the terrorists are more than them. What do they do? They retreat. There's, according to the people of the world, he that fights and runs away lives to fight and then they not even they did a film they call it die another that's the portrait of a, a, a foolish man because a man that doesn't trust in God is foolish that's what the Bible says whoever hears these wise sayings of mine and does, does them Matthew 7 I will liken him to the one who built a wise man who built his house on the rock and the Bible says the rain came and beat on the house and the wind blew on it, but it didn't shake because it was founded on the rock. Say, so, but whoever hears these sayings of man does not do them. I'll liken him to a foolish man who builds his house on the sand, on sand rather. And when the rain came and beat on the house and the winds blew on it, what happened? So if you don't trust in God, you are foolish. That's just it. For by you I run against a troop. What was Samson's prayer? He said, let me die with my enemies. David said, Nalayo, I'm running through. 
by you I run through a troop just to show you that that, that revelation he had he translated and birthed into, into other men and made them mighty men the Bible spoke of the mighty men of David one of them he says he held a spear and killed 800 men how can one man kill 800 people this is the revelation for by you I run against a troop so one man can arise with God and silence witchcraft in his village shut down witchcraft it's possible don't say it's not and then you'll prosper as though Satan is not there you know when they are constructing road they tie tape around some place they say diversion leave this place especially when they have put the quota just in case you are wise you can drive through that's the reason why they just tie tape there. If you think you are wise, drive inside. That's how a man can so rise with God and the witches around his community or his family will hold a meeting and say, if we like ourselves and this coven, isolate yourself from that person. He says, by my God, I can leap over a wall. Not a fence, a wall. Walls of those days, remember the wall of Jericho. It was thicker than this house. He didn't say, I climbed a fence. He said, by you, I can leap over. The spirit of faith gives you capacity to see victories. 20 of the same Psalms, verse 6 to 8. <laughs> I like this scripture. I like the word of God. I tell, ah, baranda, kosa, kaila, man. See, I pray that this year the word of God will become your reality. Yeah. You know, the reason why it's difficult for me to stay discouraged and it's difficult for me to quit is because every time I'm faced with a situation and just when I'm about to give up, more than two scriptures just come showing me the other side. Anything I give up on, that means there's no scripture to support the hand of God overriding it. We are building. Can I finish this thing? Money will finish and leave me. That's the fear, isn't it? The Bible says the hands of Jonathan that started this work will complete it. He who has begun a good work in you is able. Except there is no provision in God's word for that thing, I can give up. But as long as there is, we die here. He said, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. Now I know. It's a conviction. It's solid. I know it. I settled. It's not something I'm still trying to believe. It's settled in my heart. That what? That the Lord saves her. Ah. That means it doesn't matter the battles. As long as that person is anointed, he's coming out a victor. You will sing the victor song this year. Yeah. That's why I say, touch not my prophets and touch not my anointed and do my word. Prophets, the question is, are you anointed? Put your hands on your chest and say, I am anointed. Yes. As long as you have Jesus in your life by reason of the Holy Spirit, you already are anointed. He said, now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Next verse. It says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses. Hey, but we remember the name of the Lord our God. Why? Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is like a strong power. The righteous runs into it. That's the reason why you don't need to shout Jesus when, at, when they come to attack you. No. The name has become your address. It's, the Bible didn't say at the mention of the name Jesus. It said at the name. When you are saved, the name is a seal over you. It becomes your address. When you walk around, the name is walking. So you don't need to say Jesus. When they visit you, they can see it written on you is a seal. Oh, you didn't get this revelation. I'm telling you. That me, I woke up and said, Jesus, I don't know which year. I don't, I don't always have bad dreams. Maybe if I have once in six months. And God punish the devil the day I have that bad dream. Amen. Once you, one, my own policy is once I wake up from a nightmare. Satan go here and that night too. 
I invoke everything, fire, thunder, for disturbing my sleep. In fact, I'm not sleeping again. Let's, let's do video. Share you want to. Amen? No, that, 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 that's, you, that's the kind of, you must, the Bible says the kingdom of heaven of God suffer it what? Violent. You must be aggressive sometimes. No chicken heartedness. No. You tell the devil, if you touch me, I crush you. No two ways about it. It's not possible. You don't know the village, which is in my village, or you don't know where I came from. <laughs> the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Of course, I'm not, I'm not saying go into a battle anyhow. I'm showing you the understanding that sponsors victory. It says some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Verse 8. As a result of verse 7, look at verse 8. It said, they, those who trusted in chariots and horses, they trusted in military, police escort, security, connection. My uncle walk is, walks in Dangote. My father's cousin is working in Boa Cement. How will you get the job? Don't worry, I know somebody that knows the HR. The Bible says, those who trust in chariots and horses... This is what happens to them. He said they bow down. You know why they bow down? Because in those days you had to bow down to an idol. And before God, anything you trust in apart from God is an idol to you. The Bible says they bow down to those idols, but what happened? They fell. He said, but we, we refuse to bow down to the systems of men and we remain standing. That's what it means. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told the king, he said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. The Lord will serve, will deliver us. But in case he doesn't deliver us, we are not bowing. So you can go to hell. That's the meaning of what they said. And the hell was not far. Look at it there. And guess who was standing at the end of the day? They were the ones. They were thrown into the fire. But when Nebuchadnezzar looked, he saw four men standing and walking around. How do you throw people bound hand and foot into a furnace and you look and see them standing? Who loosed the chains? But the very people who threw them fell down. He said, they have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and we stand. Somebody is standing this year. In the midst of challenges, trials, and tribulations, somebody will remain standing at the end of the day. You know, sometimes just for God to prove to the devil that you are untouchable, he allows the problems to come. And then the devil throws everything at you, expecting it to swallow you. But by the time the smoke is out, the clouds clear. He sees you still standing. He sees you more than a conqueror. The Bible says, Yea, in all these things we are more. The spirit of faith gives you capacity to believe for victories. Joshua and Caleb made a confession in Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, and Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 to 9. The ten other spies said, We can't take these guys, they are giants. They will crush us, we are like grasshoppers. The land is good, but these guys will kill us. But Joshua and Caleb say, we are able to take them. In fact, they said in chapter 14, verse 6 to 9, they said that their defenses are already out of them. They are already afraid of us. The question was, physically, was that true? No. But it was the spirit of faith at work in them that made them see the victory before they even stepped into it. What they were saying they were going to step into 40 years later. But 40 years before they could see them conquering and taking Canaan. That's why Caleb came to Joshua. In, jo in the book of Joshua. Many years later. He said I was 40 years old then. When Moses spoke to both of us. He said I'm 80 years now. But I'm still as strong as before. What made him strong was not his physique. What was not his body physique. It was not the food he was eating. I'm on diet. No. What made him strong was the word of faith that he believed. The spirit of faith was alive. That he will not die until he sees victory. Ah. That's what makes you an immortal. That's what makes you more than a conqueror. I think that's the full definition of we die here. That's the meaning. Because you don't die actually. This year, I'm angry. Satan go here when for my hand this year. 
Amen? No, no, no. You know what? The people of the world claim that faith is a risk. Don't take it. Apply logic. Apply common sense. When you say faith, they say, no, common sense. Wisdom is profitable. And by wisdom, they are saying common sense. The people of the, of the world say faith is a risk. But in the kingdom, faith is not a risk. Faith is the victory. Because risk is, meant, is, is determined by probabilities and coincidences. But victory is assured. It is settled. The Bible says, from the foundation of the world was the lamb slain. Your redemption, your victory and your triumph was sealed before God created the earth. Faith is the victory, not a risk. My life is a proof. Many times over I've trusted God and it happened. And you know what? The greatest currency I have in this world is my faith. And that's all I need. Amen? I didn't say it for you. I'm saying it for myself because I don't know. I pray that after today you will be like me. The greatest currency I have in this world is by faith. When I say we will get TV here next Sunday, I don't have money in my account. Amen? But if God has to put pressure on somebody somewhere and give him no sleep to bring that TV, he will bring it. What did David say in 1 Samuel 17? Here's what David told Goliath. I like David. Ah. For 40 days, the Goliath challenged the army of Israel. For 40 days, an entire, the armed forces of a nation could not answer one man. That's to show you that they had measured all their defense capacity, their ammunitions. They are men, they are, they are military strength, they are ground troop. And they knew that nobody could challenge Goliath. So for 40 days, what kind of escapade is that? Just like this coup that is happening in these two West African nations. Echo was now is begging them, begging them. For 40 days. But when David came to Goliath, he told him, he said... <laughs> He said, you come against me with spear, sword, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel that you have defied. And he said, to teach you a lesson, I will cut off your head and give your body to the birds of the air. Where was he going to get the sword? David only had a sling and a stone. Goliath was one that had the sword. But David was telling him, that sword, you brought, you brought it for your death. You, all the weapons for your sacrifice, you brought it with you. You know, just the way Abraham told Isaac, Isaac said, the fire is here, the wood is here. Where is the lamb? He didn't know that it was a sacrifice coming. <laughs> so David told Goliath, are you like, you are the sacrifice, or you just brought all the implement, you made it easy for us. You brought everything. You stand before a giant of about nine feet. It has to be by another spirit. That's the reason why faith is not wish. Faith is actually a reality that is born. I will explain to you before we pray. Your spirit possesses you and makes you believe things that are beyond you. And people look at you as a madman. You have 100,000 and you say you are going to build. You have 100,000 in your account. You want to build two bedrooms. People begin to give you all kinds of advices. And you step out. They say this guy, they Chris. I told you two days, two Sundays ago. I say, if you are crazy about God, it's called faith. But if you are crazy about anything else but God, you they Chris. Am I? I hope I'm not. It's not a derogatory statement. You know, we have a lot of brethren here. So this kind of pastor that is talking like this. If you are crazy about God, you is faith. That's what we call it, faith. It's not faith until you have done some crazy things, some mad things, some mad things. I had a pastor one time in another country said they were built, they wanted to get a permanent site or so, something like that. He was working as a manager in a company and he told God, Lord, this year, the first six months, all my salary is going to you. 
And in addition to all that he kept giving God, in addition he gave many of his valuable properties till he had no mattress. He was sleeping on the ground. He put his few months old baby on his chest and he slept, he, he slept on the ground. And they have one of the largest auditoriums in South Africa. You are looking at me, hmm? That's how to rise in the kingdom. The last time you did a crazy thing holding on to your conviction about God was the last time you walked by faith. And it was the last time you saw results. Faith gives us the capacity to see victory. And finally, number three, faith gives us the capacity to trust in God or to trust God in any situation. Psalms 125 verse 1 to 2 it says those who trust in God shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved in verse 2 it says as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth even forever the spirit of faith gives you capacity to trust God in any situation so the situations do not determine your outcome it is your faith that determines the outcome that's the reason why in a desert God could give them water out of rock in a desert manna can fall from heaven Psalms 46 from verse 1 to 3 God is our refuge a very present help in times of trouble is that what it says a very oh I like this a very present a sure banker next verse Therefore we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. <laughs> Next verse. That means even if there is earthquake. It said though its waters roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with its swelling. He said it doesn't matter even if the earth gives way under me. It doesn't matter if Mount Kilimanjaro enters the sea. It doesn't matter if the economy of Nigeria crumbles to a depression. He says, because I know that God is a present help. He says, we will not fear. It gives you the capacity to trust. You know trust is greater than faith. Faith is sponsored by the Holy Ghost in you. Trust is, is by your own will. By your own will. No assurance from God. Faith is based on an assurance. Trust is based on a commitment. Hmm? Faith is sponsored in your spirit. Trust is from your soul. No more assurance again, but you decide. That's what Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego did. They say, even if God does not save us, at this point, we will still not bow. That was trust. The God we serve will save us. That's faith. So it was on an assurance that God will save them. But if he doesn't save us, we are not bowing. That's trust. The spirit of faith gives you the capacity to trust God. In any situation. Last scripture and we pray. Hebrews 13 verse 5 to 6. So whether you lost on cryptocurrency. $5,000. You know I. Eh, this thing about money. Eh, I don't know. May God deliver us from the spirit of mammon in this generation. It's not bothered that he has missed church for two weeks. It's because he lost $5,000 on cryptocurrency. Meanwhile, God is seeing somebody that will move in millions of dollars. So I just lost my job. Oh. How will I feed my family? Were you the one feeding them at first? I will never, listen. I will never be afraid of any situation. I mean any. I've seen all kinds of things come my way. All kinds of threats. All kinds of things. The only thing I've not seen is somebody point a gun on my face and I'm waiting for that day so that the person will know that spirits don't die. You know, one time they pointed, somebody came, a robber, he came to my father in the Lord's house. He was having a retreat in his house and the person came in the night, tore the net. Of course, they knew an apostle was staying there. And you know, these days, everybody feels pastors are rich and flamboyant. And it's true, pastors are and should be rich when you check their sacrifice. Amen. Uh, it's not everybody that can do what they do. That's the reason why it looks like they are the only ones flying jets. 
and I'm not siding those who are corrupt stealing church money okay because I don't take church money at all but it is not a crime for a pastor to prosper no and in case you don't know I believe in it very well you wait until I buy a car you will see the car don't worry you know there is a car now they use for taxi here now eh and I told one of my brothers two days ago, I say, it means that anybody that has that kind of car, your car is now a... You said it, oh, I did it. You were just, you were saving to get to one million. How much is it? How much is that car now? Huh? 2.8 million, brand new. How much is Belgium? That's the Belgium, 2.8 now. So you have been saving 50,000 from your salary every month. Because you are behind that car. Now they are using it for taxi. <laughs> so the advice is you don't rush to the market. Stay again. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in prosperity. I believe in affluence. I believe in wealth and abundance. I believe in splendor. I believe in having a dining table with four different food on top. Every time you sit down to eat. Are you hearing me? I believe in that. The Bible says it gives us all things freely to enjoy. Those things are not... We, we, some of the things we thank God for and we call blessings, they are our rights in the kingdom. It's only if you have the understanding to break into them. So nobody should make you, convince you to join other people and castigate pastors. Anybody you don't know their sacrifice, shut your mouth. Amen. Where was I before I entered that? Oh, sorry, I said shut your mouth. Amen. Let's close now. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself, this is God now. He himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Next verse. It says, so we may boldly say. So God has said, so that we can say. He said, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that we can boldly say. And listen to me, your confession determines your reality. Your reality is determined by your mentality. What you believe is what you speak, and what you speak is who you become. No two ways about it. If you were never rich before now, you never talked rich. You never attracted prosperity with your mouth. Check yourself. Check yourself. The reason why you have too many troubles, check, analyze all you have been saying in the last six months. You discovered nine out of ten things you said were negative. But tonight, the spirit of faith is being birthed in somebody. And now before we pray, how do I activate the spirit of faith? Very simple. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes when you hear the word of God, when you hear the voice of God. The spirit of faith therefore is activated when you pray in the spirit. Because the word is the spirit. And the Bible says when we pray in the spirit, he is interceding for us according to the will of God. And the will of God is the word of God. So the word that you have heard in you will grow and be built based on the volume of praying in the Holy Ghost that you commit that revelation to. Remember last day I taught you the cycle of faith. I said that faith has a life cycle. For those of us who are not here, a refresher course. That faith comes, faith grows, and faith speaks. The end of your faith is a declaration from your mouth. I'm not talking about positive confession. I'm not talking about right speaking. No, no, no. Right speaking is meant to silence doubt in your mind. Faith, the speakings of faith is not right speaking. No, it's not wishful speaking. The speakings of faith is the declarations that come from a heart that is filled with faith. Faith must come by the word of God. Then it grows inside of a man. 
That's why the Bible says, build up your most holy faith by praying. Every time you pray in the Holy Ghost, the revelation of God's word in you is being built up. You are releasing their latent power. You are releasing their capacity, their potential power. You are, it's like converting potential energy to kinetic energy. For those of you who understand science. That's how you activate the spirit of faith. And then as you pray continually, time comes where that revelation of God's word that has been inside of you possess you by the Holy Ghost and it becomes a reality around you. And all of a sudden you cannot see failure. You cannot see impossibility. I told you that the word impossible to me, it means it's most possible. Impossible is I am and possible. Impossible for me means it's most possible possible in other words when you say it cannot be done that's when i want to try it it's the spirit of faith that does that and that is your access to a life without limits that is your access to a life of miracles that is your access to a life of signs and wonders that is your access to dominion that is your access to believing in the realm of being more than a conqueror that is your access to living as a victor at all times that's what makes you a triumph in the name of jesus are we blessed tonight is it okay for us to pray Give me Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. I'm done with my message now. I want to pray. And then we'll be done in the next 15 minutes. Take it by two. Take it down. It says, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. Is the word of God the will of God? Is that what you have heard today? The Bible says, God would definitely bear witness through signs and wonders and various miracles. And gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Please stand on your feet. Just hold the hands of a neighbor. Just one, just two, two. Two, two, not more than two. So let hope rise. As death scrambles in your holy life. So let hope rise as darkness trembles in your holy land. Hallelujah. If your neighbor is born again and is filled with the Holy Ghost, I just want you in two minutes holding the hands of your neighbor open your mouth and pray out loud in the Holy Ghost for two minutes pray out loud pray out loud pray out loud Let the walls of 
Genesis crumble. Let the walls of towns crumble. Let the walls of fear break down. some people that the hand of God will come on today. But I want to pray for a few cases and we'll be done tonight. Please listen carefully. If you know you have any kind of pain that you came with, any kind of pain, as long as it is pain and it's still on you, if it is no longer with you, then it means you have been healed. Probably while the service was going on or while the word was going on. But if right now as you are standing there is some form of pain in any part of your body, please come to the front. I want to do something. That's one. Number two, if you have any kind of eye condition, any kind, including blindness, please come. Those with pain, stay by my right. Those with eye conditions, stay by the left. And in case you are for both, no problem. Just stand for one. Please, very quickly, not everybody should come out. This is, you are certain you have pain. Please, arrange them. Let me know. Let, let there be distinguishing here. 
let there be a huge space here please there should be a huge space here young ladies please just help please distinguish them i want a huge space let me know uh-huh there's an anointing here for miracles Tonight I'm going to pray. Some of you will carry that anointing for miracles before you leave here. It's going to come upon you mightily. I thought I'd hear a big amen. Eye condition of any kind, stay here. Pain, stay here. Now listen. Just listen. I just spoke about the spirit of faith, right? I told you that one of the things it does is it gives us capacity to believe for answers. Isn't it? Eye conditions here. My dear, come. Okay, is that Dukas? You Do you have an eye condition? Okay. All of you here have pains, right? All right. Now watch what will happen. Watch, watch a miracle now. Make sure you are not distracted, okay? How many of you believe God is going to heal you now? All right. Now the healing is going to be very simple. I just want you to say what I say, okay? Repeat it after me, and then we will check where the pain is. All right? Where's your pain, sir? There. You can feel it right now. All right. Where's your pain? your lower abdomen in fact god told me to rebuke the spirit that causes fibroid i'm going to do it today anybody that was diagnosed of fibroid today today after today go and get a test go and get a scan the bible says god bears witness with signs and wonders all of you i want you to just repeat after me okay forget about your pain for a moment focus on me focus on god okay say after me in the name of jesus father thank you for healing me thank you because pain ceases to exist in my life thank you because i am healed i receive my healing in jesus name Amen. The Bible says the prayer of faith shall do what? Save the sick. Now I want you to check yourself, all of you. Open your eyes and check yourself. You people with pain. Check the place where the pain was. And confirm very quickly. Check where the pain was. Palpate wherever. If possible, do what you couldn't do before. Once we get your testimony, let us know. Those of you with eye condition, what's wrong with your eyes, sir? Come. You're standing for your sister. She has eye condition. Yes, daddy. All right, God is going to heal her. Amen. My dear, what's your problem? Uh, I use glasses. Bring the glasses. Come. Come with your glasses. Yes. Do I do we have healings already? Yes. Which one? Which of them? Just give me like two or three. No, okay. God, God God's time. time. Where was the pain? I was here. On your elbows. Yes, sir. And where is it now? I'm not feeling it any longer. Flex it, let's see. Stretch it. Uh my dear, where was your pain? Eh? My leg. Your leg, where? Which which one of them? Left leg. That one. What was wrong? Is it your finger, your toe? Wh- where? It was swollen. It was swollen? Yes. It was swollen? Yes. And you couldn't match it? No, I can't match it. Okay, how is it now? It's still there. It's still there? Yes. Okay, come. What toe is that? Or what leg is that? Your left leg? I want you to touch my left leg. Wait, examine the leg. Let's see. Remove it. Now, this leg, the swelling is going to go down now. 
right here before our eyes and she'll be healed now look at me do you believe how long has this been six years yes six years yes. that devil is a liar hold this leg just put your hand there take your eyes off that place huh the bible says they looked to him and they were enlightened just keep looking at me all right father thank you for healing her in the name of jesus you couldn't match it you couldn't walk properly with it you can do everything with it but with, with pains it's swollen father thank you please help her and lord let the swelling go down now and disappear in the name of jesus it's done when she stands up you just check it come my dear what glasses well what's your, what's the condition huh i hardly read things you hardly read things yes. tears come out of your eyes yes. i see your eyes are even working yes. now yes. so that's supposed to be short-sightedness yes so when i was coming the headache was severe tears were falling from headache too. yes it was causing headache for me and god is going to heal you now you amen believe? amen how long have you been using this glass for two years now two years yes. so the condition has lasted how long uh, it's been long but i started using the glasses two, two years, years. Yes, sir. so if god heals you now what will you do with these glasses <laughs> i will discard it you discard it yes sir okay hold this glass I want you to say after me say glasses glasses thank you thank you for serving me for serving me for two years for two years you've been a good servant you've been a good servant well, I no longer need your help I don't longer need your help your services are no longer required your services are no longer required give me the glass huh close your eyes father thank you the glory of god is so strong now i'm just going to pray for all of you the, the, the power of god is everywhere here but i just need to do an experiment so that you can see and know that because of the spirit of faith that work in you this that you have seen you can do even in a greater measure how many of you believe that miracles will become normal huh so it's done huh now open your eyes you said you couldn't read without the glasses yes. um where's our bible if i give my bible you know they can do all kinds of things they can say all kinds of things uh, his bible is this and that let me see the fonts they are very small see they are very small fonts okay couldn't read without glasses for two years i want you to watch what happens now i want you to read from this place what is this 21 could you read like this before not really don't worry don't strain just look at it it's done already you are healed okay mm -hmm. read to the chief musician a psalm of david the Go king on. shall joy in the strength see even me that is standing here the fonts are small now my dear look watch this um if you had ever strained your eyes like this were there was it possible that tears would come out of your eyes yes and now there's no tears read on read on read on let's check it continue and, reading and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice thou hast given him his heart's desire and that not withholding the request of his lips. What a God we serve. Every miracle.
track where you celebrate your track. Amen. Now, you said you discard it. So you can discard it. Alright? Amen. Thank God you. heals you completely. What's your Amen. name? Sarah. Sarah. Yes, sir. You're healed. Amen. Perfected. Celebrate the Lord. All of you with eye conditions, put your hand there. Here comes the glory of the Lord. check this one completely. How about you? The pain, is it there? Is it still there? It's still there. Yes, sir. Come. I want you to look at me. Look straight to my eyes, eh? And hit your stomach gently. Hit it three times. No, hit it like this. Three times. One, two, three. Check it. Palpate it. Is it still there? You know, sometimes you don't even know when the miracle has happened. Yeah. Is it still there? Check her. Yes. There's a miracle here, sir. Yes. This is Mrs. Comfort again. Okay. All right. She had a neck pain that lasted over a year, but now she's healed. Neck pain. And they said that pain could linger to high blood pressure. It, it, it could linger to high blood pressure. Yes, sir. And now the pain is gone? Yes, sir. The devil is a liar. You're healed. I said give God a big hand of praise. How many of you are still feeling the pain? How many of you? Because of time. How many of you? You still have the pain? You still have the pain? You still have the pain? Alright, just look at me, all of you that still have the pain. The place where the pain is. If it's on your leg, you stamp your leg three times, okay? But if it's in any other place, just look at me and tap that place three times. At the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Check the pain. Once you notice they are healed, just tell me. All of you here with eye condition, put your two hands on your eyes now. Father, I rebuke every devil of affliction. Come out of their eyes. Let them go now. I bring the captivity of years to an end now. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. 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 Oh, I sense the power of God very strong. There are people God is touching now. To receive glory, honor, and power. has the pain all of you are healed now all of you are healed who had problem with the leg among all of you what couldn't you do with your leg do it let's see wait give them space what you couldn't do with your leg with the pain try it let's see reduced now huh? just that the pain has reduced the pain has reduced stamp it again three times no no I say stamp it three times don't be afraid again again jump check now how is it like huh it's reducing come let me perfect it in the name of Jesus but the rest of you are healed the rest of you are healed can we give God praise for them Thank you for healing. Now, 
You know, the healing power of the Spirit operates by one of the principles it operates is by radiation. Okay? You know, heat can be radiated from one place to another. Now, I'm not going to touch her, but the healing power will enter into her by that principle. All right? Father, thank you. Heal her completely. Heal her completely. Now, I'm not touching her. Look at me by there. Did you feel any did you feel anything on you now as I prayed? Did you feel anything? No, sir. Did you feel anything around your leg? Huh? It's reduced again. It's reduced again. <laughs> okay, her faith is her faith wants touch. Alright? So let's touch now. Hold my hand. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. yourself. Let's get somebody to check them. Go ten Father of mercy. Check them one by one. Come with your glasses. Thou art Let me have your glasses. What does it do for you? Eh? What does it do? It controls Ray. Yes. So you can look at and see, see the way she's already doing. Now I'm going to put my hands on your eyes and I will laugh. And God is going to heal you. Amen. Amen. So it's not even about in Jesus' name. The spirit of faith is at work. Come closer. No, hold on. Of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome. Everybody everywhere, just close your eyes. I see the Lord touching seven people right now. They will come under a heavy and an intense anointing. And the Lord says that anointing is for the ministry of signs and wonders. There are seven of them I'm seeing, but there could be more. But the Holy Ghost is touching them right now. Father, thank you. Thank you. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art well from receive that anointing for signs and wonders. Your life will become a sign and a wonder. to bring to me the three young men I'm seeing that the hand of God is coming mightily on. In fact, one of them will be prophesying now. I see three young men. Bring them for me because the hand of God will come on men mightily. And one of them will break into the spirit of prophecy now. It will happen right now at the count of three. One. on you now. Three. Omnipotent Father of mercy and we thou art welcome. 
just give them the seen the hand of God before you are about to see it now. Please, that's why I came here. Divine visitation is coming. Now, my dear, come, let me pray for you. So, you couldn't look at light, right? All right? Okay. God is going to heal you now. Do you believe? Hold this mic for me. Watch this. Just hold. you'll be healed right so that you know that this is is an activity of the spirit it's not how loud you shout to Jesus or how small Jesus went to the house of Peter and his mother who was to serve them lunch was tired and Jesus was so hungry she was sick rather the Bible says Jesus went and lifted her hand and the fever left and she rose up and served them in other words Jesus said stand up and go and serve us food Amen. So, Father, thank you because this captivity comes to an end. <laughs> Just help them, the power of God is everywhere. Get her 
to check her eyes. It's gone completely. Whatever it is. Check, let her check. Let her look at the light. And the tears will no longer come down again. No, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't clean your eyes again. Okay? Open your eyes now. Alright? Open your eyes. Now I want you to look at the light. Look at the light. Look at it. You saw when she came out there she was. Because of the light. No, don't touch it. Don't worry. You're healed. Okay? Look at it. It's over forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Any healings here? Ah. Yes. Uh, this is Sister Comfort Zakaria. She has been having this eye condition that lasted since her JS1. That's about eight years now. And she's healed. She could not read without glass. She used you tested her, she's healed completely yeah. now. She said she could not look at light steady for, her, for a minute. But you're but looking at it could. now. Yes, sir. And Glory to Jesus. She was speaking to her dad before coming to the pneumatic meeting that they need to go to hospital to get the glasses for her. And then during the meeting, she was like uh, praying her heart that you should call such people to pray upon for eye condition. So you were planning this week to go to get an eye glass from a doctor? No, I had this issue for eight years. So about three, three years back. No, I mean, was it true you were talking to yes, your dad? Yes, I about talked to him to... yesterday. I called him on phone because he traveled. I told him that I left class the day before yesterday. I couldn't see both from far. My eye was itching and he said, okay, he's coming back. He's, by now I think he's already back, back. home. So he that said, you tomorrow go... morning we'll go for checkup. Give me the money you want to use for checkup. Because you are healed completely. Amen. Anybody that is still having, are they all healed? Who is not healed here? Huh? Please let, let the man of God sit down. Okay. Sir? Okay. Get to check him. Huh? He's yet to be healed. Okay, just come. Let me touch you. Alright. We are out of time. I need to close now. Father, I agree with my brother in the name of Jesus. I thank you because this affliction is over. See, let me explain something to everybody. Healing is easy. Receiving from God is easy. Don't calculate. Just receive. Blank your mind from how long the condition has been. Just relax. Sometimes we are too tensed. We are so full of ourselves that we cannot allow the power of God to touch or reach to us. But if only you can exercise freedom in His presence... Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your servant. Thank you because the condition is over. The healing has come. Amen. The healing has come. Amen. This captivity is rolled away. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please escort him to his seat. Let him get to check it, okay? I don't want to check him because he's a pastor. Or maybe you just get him somewhere. I don't want him standing here because he's a, he's a man of God. Come, my dear. How long? More than eight years. More than eight years. Okay. Affliction, go now. In the name of Jesus. That could not hold you down. Condition. What was your condition? Um, crossed eye and um, short sightedness. Crossed eye? Yes, sir. What's crossed eye? Who's a doctor? Yeah, please help us. Sorry, my dear. Don't worry, it's over. Who's a doctor? Help us. What's crossed eye? I don't know what crossed eye is. Eh? Or a medical practitioner or whatever. Eh? What was what what's the meaning of that? What does it do? Inability for the both eyes to see a particular object at the same time. Your both eyes cannot see an object at the same time. That devil is a liar. So your both eyes are open, but you can't see the same object. Yes, but if you close one eye, you can see it. Yes, Alright, now I want you to look at me with your two eyes. Can you see this, Mike? Let's close one eye and check. Close your right eye, let's see. Uh, can you see it? Yes, sir. Close your left eye. Let's see. 
Can you see it? Yes, sir. Now look at me with your two hands. Can you see what I'm holding? Yes, sir. Can you see it? Yes, sir. With your both eyes. Hmm? No, sir. Look at it. Father, thank you for healing her. It's over. It's over. And you said what else again? Short sightedness, so you can't read. Yes, from afar. From afar. You can't read things that are afar. It's over. Put something on the on the screen, maybe a scripture or something. Let her read it. In the name of Jesus. Close your eyes and breathe in three times. Number one, two, three. Now I want you to read what is there. God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles. Could you read that far? You couldn't read that far. Take her back to my seat. Let's let's be sure. Let's confirm it's gone. Read again at the count of three. One, two, three. God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles, and the gift of the Holy Spirit according to His own will. Now. Are you seeing them with your both eyes? Look at them. Yes, sir. You can see them with your both eyes now. Yes, Come on, give God the praise. Where is, um, where is Sapi? Okay. Let's get to check him and know if he's healed. Please lift your hands. Father, thank you tonight. That fair lady. Yes, could you come? Can I pray for you? She said yes. From afar. What's your name? Faith. Fancy. Huh? Fancy. Fancy. Yes, oh, that's name. Fancy. Fancy, please hold my hand. Father, let your fire come upon her and rest upon her. Make her a vessel for you. for sure. I know this thing. Like something just came on her now. I felt it very strong. Alright? Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. 
How do you feel now? Describe how you're feeling. Um, I was feeling so much pain at my back before, but when I held your hand, I'm. Oh, feeling... there was even a pain behind, and we didn't pray for it. Bring her. everybody we have to close now right now we can continue this service honestly I is like I just felt an extra anointing just come on me but we have to close we'll continue next week after next Sunday the Sunday after next Sunday which is um, 20th there's going to be an anointing to handle deliverance cases so I'm announcing it before now. On the 20th, bring anybody that has any deliverance case. If they are mad, carry them with their chain and bring them. What did I say? If they are mad, take them from the hospital and bring them. Did you hear what I said? If, they are, if it has gone to that point, anybody you know suffering from affliction, arrows of the enemy, battles of any kind, there's going to be a strong anointing for deliverance on the 20th of this month. So I'm announcing it before time. Bring them here. Amen. And the power of darkness will be disgraced. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Father, we bless you. We glorify your name. Your name be exalted forever and ever. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Very quickly, before we close, all standing, eyes closed. Eyes open anyway, but just all standing. If you are here and you need to make a decision for Jesus, you've heard the word, you've seen the miracles, please no movement anywhere. This is a special moment of this service. You've heard the word, you've been through the service, but you know that your ways are not right with God. Or perhaps you are not even born again, you need to make a decision for Jesus. Or you used to be a believer, but a lot of things may have happened and you don't know where you are with God. You want to rededicate your life to Him again. You want to surrender to Him. One of the things that you must come against is shame. In an open meeting like this with so many people, you need to overcome shame. It's not about who is around me. I'm going to make an altar call right now for those who want to receive Jesus into their life afresh or those who want to rededicate their life to God afresh. I want ushers to stand at the aisles as they come out, escort them out, okay? That's our way of encouraging them. Let there be ushers or people standing in the aisle as they come out, escort them to the front. But I'm going to give 10 seconds. If you are here, you say, man of God, I know truly I'm not born again. I just go to church. But I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I don't have a direct encounter. If I die now, I don't know if I'm going to heaven. Or perhaps you used to be a believer. You walked with God. Everything was fine. But a lot of things have happened recently. And you don't feel that connection again. You want to rededicate your life. You want to make your ways right again. You want to surrender afresh. Join this category and come to the front. I'll give 10 seconds right now. Your time starts from now. And as they come, I want you to celebrate them. The Bible says there is joy in heaven. Not when many people repent. If one person, one soul, one soul is saved. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus. So if you are here, you want to give your heart to the Lord, or you want to rededicate your life, I'm counting to ten. I want you to make your way to the front boldly. There will be people to escort you from the aisles. One. Two. Three. Apostle, I'm letting go of my past. I don't care.
care whatever anybody will say. I want to say yes to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to Him. As I'm talking, if your, if your heart is convicting you, make your way to the front. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Forget about shame. Forget about who is around you. Say yes to Him. Nine. thinking about it, join her. towards her and pray for her and those that are following online that are making the decision for Jesus I want you to repeat the prayer after me my dear please come I want you to put your right hand on your chest okay close your eyes and repeat after me your life is about to change now say Lord Jesus today I come to you I repent of my sins I believe that you died and rose again so that I will be saved. I receive eternal life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Father, I ask that you place your seal, the seal of your spirit upon her. I thank you because she's saved, she's born again. I thank you because her past is rolled away, her sins are forgiven. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will come upon her mightily. Use her for your glory. Forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name.